But we begin first with breaking news out of Egypt, where former President Mohamed Morsi has died. State media reports a 67-year-old suffered a heart attack during a court hearing. He was facing charges in an espionage case. Now, Morsi was the country's first ever democratically elected president. But his tenure was both short as well as controversial. He'd been in and out of court and housed in prison since 2013 ouster. Halarani has more now on his life as well as his legacy. Mohamed Morsi burst onto Egypt's stage after winning the presidential election, the country's first civilian and Islamist president. The Muslim Brotherhood thrust Morsi into the presidential role after the election commission disqualified their first choice, Harat al Shatter, dubbing Morsi the spare tire. Morsi was born in August 1951 in Egypt's northern Sharkia governorate. He graduated with a PhD in material engineering from the University of Southern California in the United States. His first foray into politics came as a parliamentarian in 2000. In January 2011, the country entered a new age. Millions of Egyptians demanded President Hosni Mubarak step down. The then banned Brotherhood, reluctant at first, eventually joined the protests. Security forces arrested Morsi and other Muslim Brotherhood leaders on January 28th. He escaped in a nationwide jailbreak two days later. The following turbulent two years witnessed a new constitution and parliament dominated by the Brotherhood. Morsi became Egypt's first democratically elected president in June 2012. But the new president inherited the country's many problems, rolling blackouts and gas shortages plagued his presidency. His blunders making him fodder for critics. Late-night comedian Bassem Youssef constantly lampooned the president. Despite several international gaffes, he'd be widely praised for negotiating a ceasefire to Israel's war with Hamas in Gaza in 2012. But it marked the beginning of the end of his presidency. He issued a constitutional declaration giving him pharaonic-like powers. <laughs> Protesters rebelled, and many were killed outside the presidential palace. It tested his already tense relationship with the judiciary and military. Morsi would replace long-serving defense minister Hussein Tantawi with General Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. The struggling economy and perceived Islamist threat to Egypt's identity gave birth to the Tamarad, or rebel campaign. On June 30th, 2013, on his first anniversary as president, millions of Egyptians gathered to denounce their leader. The writing was in the sky. Egypt's future president, al-Sisi, the chief of the armed forces, ousted Morsi on July 3rd. Following a controversial but popular coup by the military, it ushered one of the deadliest summers in Egypt's history. Security forces would clear camps of protesting Morsi supporters, killing hundreds of people. The next time we'd see then ex-president Morsi would be in a cage. Despite definitely dismissing the court's legitimacy, a judge still sentenced him to death for his 2011 prison escape. Let's get more on this breaking news story. Awa Dame is following the story for us from Istanbul, Turkey. She joins me now with the latest. Awa, we knew that he was in poor health, but do we know at this stage how exactly he died? No, we're trying to piece that together, Issa. What we do know is that he collapsed while he was in court, and we actually just heard from one of the lawyers for the Muslim Brotherhood who told CNN that Morsi spoke for about seven minutes before court adjourned and then about a minute later according to this lawyer he heard commotion people shouting other defendants screaming Dr. Morsi has fallen what we know from state TV is that it appears that he died either en route to the hospital or in hospital at around 10 to 5 local time but as you mentioned there there's going to be a lot of questions about his health and about how detrimental his detention was to his health. And this is something that has been highlighted numerous times by Human Rights Watch, which was, in fact, in the process of releasing a report 
um, about his detention. And then last year, there was a panel that was commissioned by Morsi's family. Members on it uh, were British parliamentarians that last year was warning about how his detention, his lack of access to proper medical treatment. Remember, uh, he had diabetes. He had issues with his liver. He had liver disease. But according to this um, British report, they were calling his detentions, the conditions under which he was detained, saying that they would constitute cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment, that they could meet the threshold for torture in accordance with Egyptian international law, and had warned a year ago that inadequate medical care could lead to Morsi's premature death. Now, according to um, state media, a source has told state media, a source within the prosecutor's office, that Morsi was receiving adequate medical care. And I think we can expect right now to be hearing a lot in Egyptian media about how he was being humanely treated, about how he was receiving adequate medical care. But on the flip side of that, you have a lot of disturbing reporting coming out from individuals organizations like Human Rights Watch who have been really digging into the conditions under which he was being held because as we know only too well, uh, Egypt's track record when it comes to humane treatment of its prisoners is severely lacking. Yeah, and actually if we can bring up uh, Leroy, my producer, I can ask him to bring up that report from Human Rights Watch, the front page of that report where it talks about the isolation, there you go, isolation, years of confinement, violating his rights, the no access to family or to lawyers. Uh, let me ask you this finally, Awa. How will this um, be received in Egypt? Does he still have support in Egypt? He does amongst his followers, amongst the members of his party, even though it no longer exists, amongst those who do remain loyal to him and those who do remain loyal to the Muslim Brotherhood. But there have also been widespread efforts by the government of President Sisi to really clamp down on any sort of voice of dissent or any sort of voice of opposition. And then one also can extrapolate just from Egypt to the broader Middle East. Qatar, for example, has uh, tweeted and talked about how this is a devastating loss. Here in Turkey, Turkey's President Erdogan and his party, Erdogan's party, the AKP, has historically had very close ties to the Muslim Brotherhood, has basically called Sisi a tyrant, directly blamed him for Morsi's death, and called Morsi a martyr. Yeah, we shall keep an eye, of course, on all the developments and the political implications, of course, for as you see, for as you see there on the ground uh, in Egypt. Awa Damon for us in Istanbul, meanwhile. Thank you very much, Awa.